Hey, greetings. Praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. It is the sixth day of the week, the 20th day of February, the year of our Lord, 2015, 5775. I greet you on this day, and I welcome you to my humble abode on this earth. Um, and this video is for the purpose of sharing with you a passage from a book. And it's not the Holy Bible, actually. It's another book. And it's really the only book that I would recommend to anybody outside of the Holy Bible. And it's called Fox's Book of Martyrs. I believe that this is a book that every Christian should have, and it should be read from, from time to time, uh, just to remind us of the nature of the battle that we fight and the reality of the, the battle between kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And as the scripture said, kingdom will be uh, fighting against kingdom, nation against nation. And so having said that, I want to explain to you a couple of things before I read a passage from this book. The reason that I'm doing this is because I am uh, in communication with a brother who is also a pastor in uh, the nation of Kenya, which is on the continent of Africa. And uh, this brother is a pastor ordained of God. He, he doesn't have a piece of paper from a seminary. It's not his profession. It's what he is called of God to be. And it has come to pass that in that nation, Kenya, and many other nations in the world as well, if you are a Christian and you gather together with other Christians, the state has deemed that you are an organization and that you must register with the state and that you must pay exorbitant fees to have a license to meet together as a church. And this brother is, and the church that is with him, they don't have money to, to register with the state, nor are they an organization. That's what the state doesn't understand. And so this brother is a pastor and the, and the saints that are with him they're they're Christians okay when they give their tithes they bring it in the form of food that they've grown on their property so that everybody can have food to eat it's not a manner of payment for the pastor so that he can have a, a big nice house and fancy shoes to wear and a nice car to drive um, he doesn't have any of those things and he, he doesn't make a living at what he does uh, and so there is nothing for anybody to take from him there's no piece of the pie for the government to take because there is no pie Okay, and, but the government doesn't understand that. And this brother wrote to me, and he was a little bit fearful of this. And forgive me if I use the word fearful incorrectly. I'm not saying that he is a fearful man, but he was, he's was he been very concerned about this. Because if the government of Kenya finds out that he is meeting together with other Christians and they don't have a license from the government and they haven't paid their fees, they could be subject to arrest and imprisonment. Welcome to the last days. Praise the Lord. So I prayed about this and I, I wrote the brother back and I gave him counsel for many reasons, which I enumerated in the letter that I wrote to him, to not conform to this unlawful statute and to, if the situation comes up, may the God bless him to be, may God bless him to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and to give them an answer with perfect wisdom. And that he may make known to them that they are not That, that what they are, <clears throat> the Church of Jesus Christ, is not the same thing as the organization that the state refers to as a church. And so their ordinance doesn't apply to the Church of Jesus Christ because it's not a business and there's no money to pay any fees with and there's nothing to steal from them. And as I wrote this letter, and of course afterwards I, I prayed about it again as I was praying, something came into my heart and it was the story of a man named Lawrence. Okay, and that's the story that I'm going to read to you. And it won't take long to read from you. It's just a couple pages. But this man named Lawrence was a testimony uh, as a martyr for the faith of Jesus Christ. He was a testimony to what the treasure of the church, the true treasure of the church, really is. And before I read this to you, I want to let you know that the period of time that this is taking place in, that I'm about to read to you about, is in the third century, in the latter part of the third century. And that is in the period of time that the Bible refers to as the period of the angel of the church at Pergamos. And you can read the, about that period in Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 through 17, the angel of the church at Pergamos. During that period of time, the Catholic church had not been established yet as a Catholic church, and there had, there had not been an official pope made yet, but it was during the time of the Roman emperors and the church... Of Jesus Christ had become greatly polluted, which you can read in the passage of Scripture that I just gave you, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. And so during that time, there was a lot of things that the church did and embraced and taught that were not from Jesus Christ. And 
and they were from Roman paganism, and that was the during the time of the that snowball rolling downhill, getting bigger and faster, and in reference to the paganism of Rome being assimilated into the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ to pollute it. So, having said that, I want to let you know that when I read this passage from this book, not everybody that's ever been martyred for the name of Jesus Christ was a Christian and inherited the kingdom of God. Okay, because Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And the Apostle John said that if a man does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, he does not have God. Okay, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. But he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. So if any man come unto you and bring not this doctrine, this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. John wrote that in, the second, in his second letter, which we call Second John. So having said that, I want to let you know that not everything in this book that, that so-called Christians did was according to the doctrine of Christ, because this was during the time when the Catholic religion was evolving and it was, per, uh, it was perverting the, the doctrine of Christ in the church. But having said that, this story, this true story of this man named Lawrence is something that I felt that I needed to share with you. And again, I highly recommend having a copy of this book if you're a Christian and reading from it from time to time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is on uh, page 26 it's, it's in chapter 2 of Fox's Book of Martyrs. I'm beginning at, towards the top of page 26. Let us draw near to the fire of martyred Lawrence. Let me just remove this bookmark real quick. Let us draw near to the fire of martyred Lawrence, that our cold hearts may be warmed thereby. The merciless tyrant, understanding him to be not only a minister of the sacraments, but a distributor also of the church riches, promised to himself a double prey by the apprehension of one soul. First, with the rake of avarice to scrape, himself, to, scrape to himself the treasure of poor Christians, and then with the fiery fork of tyranny, so to toss and turmoil them that they should wax weary of their profession. Okay, so those of us who aren't proficient in English, there's this emperor who knows of this man who is not only a priest, but also a keeper of the treasure of the church. And he thought to, to gather to himself two riches in one, to not only gather to himself the riches of the church, but also to torment and torture to death the saints within the church. Let's continue. With furious face and cruel countenance, the greedy wolf demanded where this Lawrence had bestowed the substance of the church, who, craving three days' respite, promised to declare where the treasure might be had. In the meantime, he caused a good number of poor Christians to be congregated. So, when the day of his answer was come, the persecutor strictly charged him to stand to his promise. Then, valiant Lawrence, stretching out his arms over the poor, said this, these are the precious treasure of the church. These are the treasure indeed in whom the faith of Christ reigneth, in whom Jesus Christ hath his mansion place. What more precious jewels can Christ have than those in whom he hath promised to dwell? For so it is written, I was in hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. And again, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. What greater riches can Christ our Master possess than the poor people in whom he loveth to be seen? Oh, what tongue is able to express the fury and madness of the tyrant's heart? Now he stamped, he stared, he ramped, he fared as one out of his wits. His eyes like fire glowed, his mouth like a boar formed, his teeth like a hellhound grinned. Now, not a reasonable man, but a roaring lion, he might be called. Kindle the fire, he cried. Of wood make no spare. Hath this villain deluded the emperor? Away with him, away with him. Whip him with scourges, jerk him with rods, buffet him with fists, brain him with clubs. Jesteth the traitor with the emperor? Pinch him with fiery tongs, gird him with burning plates. Bring out the strongest chains, and the fire forks, and the grated bed of iron, on the fire with it. Bind the rebel hand and foot, and when the bed is fire hot, on with him. Roast him, broil him, toss him, turn him, on pain of our high displeasure, 
Do every man his office, O ye tormentors. The word was no sooner spoken, but all was done. After many cruel handlings, this meek lamb was laid, I will not say on his fiery bed of iron, but on his soft bed of down. So mightily God wrought with his martyr Lawrence, so miraculously God tempered his element in the fire, that it became not a bed of consuming pain, but a pallet of nourishing rest. This is what is written of Lawrence, who suffered under the hand of the Roman emperor that day, who was called Sextus. And the reason that I shared that with you was because the true church of Jesus Christ has no earthly, worldly riches to be paid to any government as a form of payment to obtain a license to be an organization. The true church of Jesus Christ is not an organization. It hath no name other than her bridegroom, Jesus Christ. It has nothing that the state could steal, no riches that the state could steal. The riches of the church of Jesus Christ are the church of Jesus Christ. And so in any nation where you may live, if your government is doing these very same things, and if they're not, they probably will be soon, you can know of a truth that you, if you are of the church of Jesus Christ, number one, do not fit their description of a church. Number two, have nothing to steal. And number three, will not conform to their unlawful statutes which they impose upon the religious. Let the mainstream get their licenses and go to their seminaries and get their degrees and produce their professional pastors to lie to the people on behalf of the government who owns them. But let the church of Jesus Christ be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, separate from the world, crucified unto the world and the world unto us, and remaining witnesses of the Son of God who has risen from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. May this blessing, excuse me, may this message be a blessing to those of you out there who love the Lord Jesus Christ and may it encourage you in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in these last days, there's a lot of places in the world where it's very easy to live. It's very luxurious to live. And I'm not speaking against that. It's, it's a wonderful thing to have nice things. But let not those nice things and that luxury taint you and destroy the testimony of Jesus Christ that is in you. Because if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men, cast out into the streets. So have salt in yourselves. And remember this testimony that I've shared with you today, that it may strengthen you, comfort you, and encourage you. In Jesus' name, amen.